Today you become man and wife, fulfilling the sunnah as way of life. Today you find serenity, may your life be filled with sincerity. There is no happier day in your life than the virtue of being man and wife. There's joy without any end. Verily, your praise is due to the Almighty Lord. We praise Him, we seek His aid, we beseech forgiveness to Him. We seek refuge of Allah Ta'ala from our evil souls and our evil actions. He whom Allah Ta'ala guides is rightly guided. And He whom Allah Ta'ala misguides, no one can ever, ever guide Him. I bear witness without any compulsion that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I bear witness and testify that Muhammadun ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the slave, the messenger of Allah Ta'ala. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, his family, his companions, and every single one who follow their footsteps to the last day. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has blessed man with uncountable blessings. And indeed, one of the greatest of these blessings is our senses, which are the feelings, the hearing, the seeing, the smelling. We must use all these senses in such a way as to gain benefit from them in the life of this world and in the life of the next, so that can be for and not against us on the day of resurrection. Now, dear brothers and sisters, that the most dangerous of these senses are these two eyes. Are these two eyes that we are looking through. They are the windows to the world for the body. They are the windows to the world for the body. Through them you see the ugly, the beautiful, the good and bad. Through them you see wickedness, righteousness, lawful, unlawful, veiled, unveiled, safety and danger. Through them you can see that which is right and that which is wrong. And whatever you see gets transferred back to the heart. Whenever you look at something, that which you see always gets transferred back to the heart where in return, that could be either blessed or sick. And we know the saying that a picture carries or tells of a thousand words. And indeed, how many pictures, how many scenes has that effect on a human being? Not only does it change his complete life, but his behavior and his understanding. This is the reality. Through these eyes, dear brothers and sisters, through these eyes, one of the greatest and the most dangerous sins, crimes on this earth initiates. The crime of zina. The crime of illicit intercourse. And indeed it does, wallahi, brothers and sisters, it destroys and shatters the homes. Good behavior and character vanishes. Fitna and jealousy spread. The society as a whole through this evil crime collapse. Shamefulness, embarrassment, 
comes to the family, comes to the relatives. And worst of all, worst of all is that it opens the doors widely for the most dangerous diseases a person can carry. Herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, and the most dangerous killer of all, AIDS. Syphilis, which is a serious sexually transmitted disease affecting the body organs and the parts like the brain, the genital, the skin, the tissues, is spreading at an alarming rate, over 40 million cases yearly. Over 40 million cases yearly is reported. Gonorrhea, another serious, Allah. Gonorrhea, another serious, filthy, sexually transmitted disease, which causes inflammation to the genital mucous membrane, making it very hard, a harmful, a painful, burning feeling when you pass urine. Commonly known to be among prostitutes. Filth. This is spreading likewise at an unbelievable rate. Over 250 million cases annually. In the United States of America, over a million cases alone there is reported. Over a million cases annually is reported. Oh, what else is there? It's the mother of all evil anyway, so it's not surprising, is it? And AIDS, you don't even need to talk about it. You know, it's, what can you talk about? You know, you'll be here day and night just trying to uh, say the number. And look at them, they're still trying to find through medical drugs, chemicals, medicine, a prevention. SubhanAllah! You stupid people, the prevention is there! The solution is there. Reflect, open your eyes, oh blind people. Wallahi, no prevention. There is no prevention in other than Islam. 1400 years ago, our beloved Prophet وسلم, said to us, when wrongdoings spread between people, illicit intercourse and evil, spread between people and it becomes common, a serious sickness and disease will spread amongst them. Which was not known to the ancestors. And isn't this what we are witnessing today? Today in our society, when a girl or boy reaches the age or reaches high school, if they are still virgin, they start, they're being fought, laughed at, mocked, teased, if not belted. It's become a personal freedom. The practice of zina is a personal freedom. You're still a virgin? Ha! You're degraded. This is what we are experiencing today in the West. <coughs> Likewise, how many male youth? How many men? How many old men? Not only the youth, not only the men, but the old men as well, spend a lot of times on the roads, on, in the markets, in shopping centers, on the beaches, on the net, television, on the magazine or paper, looking at that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade. In more clearer terms, perving at woman. One of the poison arrows of Iblis, as collected by Sulaiman ibn al-Ash'af on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, that the look is one of the evil, the poison arrows of Iblis. Whoever lowers his gaze from women for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala will put sweetness in his heart to the day of resurrection. In another hadith, where Abu Sa'id al-Khudri 
He warned us, O Muslims, to not sit or spend times on the roads. Why? So we do not look at that which is forbidden. He said, beware and avoid the roads. They said, the companions, oh Allah's apostle, we cannot help sitting on the roads because this is the place where we meet and talk. He said, if you refuse but to do so, then pay the road its rights. They said, what is its rights, O Prophet of Allah? He said, lowering your gaze, refraining from harming people, returning greeting and enjoining that which is good and preventing that which is evil. Muslim Ibn Hijaj, the great narrator, collector of hadith, narrated the hadith of Abu Jarir. He asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, what should we do if our glance accidentally falls upon someone, somebody forbidden to look at? He said, turn your eyes away. You see a lady haram to look at? He said, turn your eyes. What are you going to do? Turn your eyes. In another hadith, he mentions to Ali, do not follow the look with another, for the first is yours, but not the last. In other words, dear creatures, if you accidentally look at a lady, a strange lady without intention, there is no harm. You are not sinning. However, if you insist on looking, you continue looking. The first look is not this. That's about 50 looks. The look is, astaghfirullah azim not this. It's not like this. And Allah knows your intention. In another beautiful hadith, he mentions, adultery has been written on man, the son of Adam. And he will achieve it without doubt. A man commits adultery with his eyes when he looks at a strange woman. The adultery of the ears is listening to sexual dialogue. The adultery of the tongue is to talk about sex. The adultery of the hand is catching that which is unlawful. And the adultery of the feet is going towards a strange woman. The heart, he continues as saying, Ardently, passionately desires adultery. However, the sexual organs confirm or contradict that. Confirm or contradict that. Yes, it's a big trial, a big exam. One of the strongest exams on man. For indeed, Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari and Muslim ibn Hijaj rahimahumullah ta'ala collected the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I have not left behind me a more harmful tribulation for man than that of woman. It is hard, especially in our day where we are living in a society, in an environment, in a community where people are naked. It's the biggest trial and the more time goes past, the worse it's going to get, the shorter it's going to get. The stronger the trial is going to become. This whole world, this whole life of ours is a test. These senses are exams. This sight is an exam. Are you going to pass or are you going to fail? So there is an alternative, a substitute. Allah Ta'ala makes it easy for man. He says clearly in Surah Al-Rum, verse 21, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ and a money signs, beautiful verse, brothers and sisters. Is this that he created for you wives from your own kind, from your own selves, that you might find repose in them? 
confidence, trust, love. And indeed, in this is science for those who reflect. And it says he placed affection and mercy in him between the two of you. And indeed, in this are signs for those who reflect. Man and woman, Allah created all humanity from one single soul. Allahu Akbar, one single soul. Think about your origin, one, one man. That's our essence, one man. And from him or of him was created his mate. And from the both of them, one man, one woman, scattered abroad countless men and women. Countless, Allahu Akbar. Billions and billions and billions of people. Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَنِينَ وَحَفَدَةً وَرَزَقَكُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ أَفَ بِالْبَاطِلِ هُمْ يُؤْمِنُونَ أَفَ بِالْبَاطِلِ يُؤْمِنُونَ وَبِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ هُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ Allah created from your own self-wives. And He created from your wives for you, sons and grandsons. And He provided for you blessings. Do they then believe in false deities, gods? and disbelieve in the favor of the Almighty Lord. Allah Ta'ala created two different sexes. This is the reality of man. Two different sexes. Man, woman. Why? For the fun of it? No! So they can provide company to one another. Love one another. Procreate children. And live and peace and tranquility to the commandments of Allah Ta'ala and the directions, the directives of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Listen to this beautiful verse Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahun What a beautiful verse They are a garment for you as you are a garment to them. It requires that a husband and wife live together as garments, meaning just as garments are used for what? For protection, for warmth, for concealment, for safety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects that from a husband and wife. Beautiful. You wear your garment to protect you from the cold, to warm you. Likewise, you are like that to your wife, and she is like that to you. You know, one feels oneself incomplete without the other. You know, a man and a woman, a husband and wife, complement each other. They beautify, they perfect, they complete one another. This relationship is a spiritual relationship. It generates and sustains mercy, affection, compassion, love, kindness, mutual confidence. It also attains psychological, emotional, and spiritual companionship. Islam regards marriage, dear brothers and sisters, as a righteous act, an act of responsible devotion. For wallahi, he who marries, has fulfilled half of his religion. So let him feel Allah Ta'ala regarding the remaining half. As Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned to us, when a man marries, he has fulfilled half of his religion. So let him feel Allah Ta'ala remaining with the remaining half. Likewise, marriage shields a person from illicit intercourse, such as fornication, promiscuity, gazing, which ultimately leads to all sorts of evil. We can say marriage is a fortress of chastity. As Bukhari in Muslim narrated the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who said, we were young while we were with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I had no money whatsoever. Muhammad sallam said to them, O oh, young men, whoever among you is able to marry, should marry, should do so. For it help him 
lower his gaze and guards his modesty and he who is unable. Let him fast. Let him fast. For fasting diminishes sexual desire. But out there there is a misconception where many people think that it is better to remain single. Do not get married. You cannot worship Allah better. She's going to hassle you and hassle you and not allow you and prevent you from going to lessons. And she will pick on you. This is a shaitanic whisper. In, in other words, but n n n n she will say it here. This is a satanic whisper. Listen to this beautiful hadith. Three men came to the houses of the wives of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking how does Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam worship his Lord, Allah ta'ala. When the wives of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed these three men, they considered their acts of worship as being insufficient, nothing. They said, we're away from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whose past and future sins are forgiven. So what did one of them say? One of them said, I will fast throughout the whole year and never break my fast. The other one said, I will pray all night and not sleep. And the third one said, I will keep far away from women and not marry them. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed of this, did he say small? Did he smile and laugh and say, MashaAllah, these people are righteous. He said, are you so and so who said such and such? They said, yes. He said, by Allah, I am more submissive to Allah and more afraid of him than you. Yet I fast and break my fast. I pray at night and I sleep at night. And I marry the ladies. Allahu Akbar, he had nine wives at one time. Whoever does not follow my way, it's the Prophet saying something. Whoever does not follow my way is not from me. In Islam, it's not what you think is better, it's what I say, what I do. And this breaks and kills all innovation. <coughs> Abdullah ibn Abbas. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, one of the greatest scholars amongst the companions. He asked the man, are you married? The man said, no. He looked at him. No. He goes, no. He goes, marry, for indeed the best man in this nation had the largest number of wives. <laughs> Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he was suffering, suffering severely from a plague. And he told them, let me marry, for I dislike to meet Allah Ta'ala unmarried. For I dislike to meet Allah Ta'ala non-married. Imam Sunnah Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah Ta'ala said, I dislike to spend a night without a wife. Not one night he liked to, to spend without a wife. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared Salman al-Farisi and Abu Dardai brothers after the migration, Salman visited the Dardai one day, Abu Dardai, and he wasn't there. He saw Umm Dardai wearing shabby clothes, meaning worn down clothes. He said, Ya Umm Dardai, why are you dressed like this for? She said, your brother Salman prays all night and fast all day, he has no longer interest for this world. Then, meanwhile, Abu Dardai comes. He sees Salman, greets him, makes him some food, puts it in front of him. Salman said, Tfaddal, eat with me, because now I'm fasting. He goes, by Allah, you will eat with me. So he came and ate with him. Night fell down. It's bedtime. Salman was going to sleep and he noticed Abu Dardai standing for prayer. He got to stop and go to sleep. He went to sleep. 
the middle of the night came, Abu Dhabi got up. Salman noticed him. Stop, go to sleep. He went to sleep. The last part of the night came. Abu Dirdat got up, to, got up to pray. Salman got up with him. After prayer, he said, Ya Abu Dirdat, Di jismika alayka haq, wa li ahlika alayka haq, wa li deenika alayka haq. Oh Abu Dirdat, your body has a right over you. Your wife, the maskeen, oh Allah maskeen, has a right over you. Especially to all the Arabs, Mark. Has a right over you. And your religion has a right over you. So, Abu Dardat was in a state of shock. You know, what's, up, what's the man talking about? And what I'm doing is nothing but good. So, the next day, he went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him exactly what happened during the night. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Salman has spoken the truth. Salman has spoken the truth. It is advised that we marry. But is it an obligation? Do we have to get married? Are we sitting if we do not get married? When we carefully look or consider the injunctions of the Quran, it will become clear to us that without a doubt that it is an obligation when when a man or a woman, first a man, a man has the ability physically and financially to support his wife. I don't mean having 15 houses or 20 million dollars, no. I mean somewhere to sleep and something to eat throughout the day and that's it. When he has that ability, and this is the main thing, he fears that if he does not get married, his sexual urge will tempt him to commit fornication. If a man is under this category, you have no choice but to get married. And if you do not, you'll be sinning. It is also compulsory for a lady to get married if she cannot maintain herself. There's no means of maintenance for herself. Likewise, if she fears that her sexual urge will drive her into fornication, she must marry as well. Don't say, oh Allah, I've got to finish university, I've got to finish this, I've got to finish balut, and then wait for 10 years, I want to get married then. And then by then, I don't know how many sin you would have committed. A misconception by a lot of Muslims. Alhamdulillah, now we know that when it's halal or when it's haram. Who are we allowed to marry? Who are we allowed to marry? In Surah An-Nisa, verse 23, Allah Ta'ala clearly states this. I'm going to mention this verse. And whoever can tell me the verse in English or the categories or the ladies that you cannot marry, whoever attempts and succeeds to get them all right after this verse is mentioned, will get a gift, inshallah, at the end of the lesson. فَدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنِ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ حُرِّمَتَ عَلَيْكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ وَعَمَّاتُكُمْ وَخَالَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُ الْأَخِ وَبَنَاتُ الْأُخْتِ وَأُمَّهَاتُكُمْ اللَّاتِ أَرْضَعْنَكُمْ وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ مِنَ الرَّضَاعَةِ وَأُمَّهَاتُ نِسَائِكُمْ وربائبكم اللاتي في حجوركم من نسائكم اللاتي دخلتم بهن فإن لم تكونوا دخلتم بهن فلا جناه عليكم وحلائل أبنائكم الذين من أصلابكم وأن تجمعوا بين الأختين إلا ما قد سلف إن الله كان غفورا رحيما هذا من أتم that's one verse. Can't you say? It's a long verse too. It's a drink of water. Who's going to attempt? Now I'll repeat. Who knows the verse? I want three attempts. Fails. I'm going to have to mention it due to time and the lesson. One. Any other attempts? Three people. Two. In English, in order, correct. One mistake, failed. Walid, Fadl, you're first. 
You've already failed. Brothers, please, I want silence. You don't know in order? Oh, no, that's a condition. Fadal, ya habibi. What's your name, bro? Hayakallah, ya Bilal. Fadal, ya Bilal. Prohibited to you, I'm just hoping you hear, I'm not going to say it. Prohibited to you for marriage is one. Astaghfirullah al Azim. Astaghfirullah. You're changing the verse of Allah. No. It's not your sister next. Your daughter. Vasallahu mustaan. You know, we just say it in sequence. Yalla, yalla. Daughter, sister. Daughter, sister. Yes. 